cheerio, dreamscapers. You're back for another fancy and fantastic video. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just messing around. Uh, so, yeah, we're unboxing the Ven2. Ven2 or Ventrue? Anyhow, here we have the CPU plug for it's a four pin, so it's uh, adjustable. Then we have a three pin RGB um, female and male connectors, as you can see there. Um, so that's helpful in, in using it in different um, RGB configurations. Then we've got our Intel hardware for um, mounting an Intel um, processor. And we've got our Intel backplate, and then also we have our AMD adapters. Um, so you can use this CPU cooler on any of those, and you also have a little tube of thermal paste. We have an instruction manual. And then last but not least, we have our CPU cooler. It's a five, tu five tube uh, cooler and mounts a 120 millimeter fan. All right, let's get into the installation. Um, first, we're gonna clean off the CPU. I'm using uh, an automotive solvent, um, carburetor cleaner. Uh, you can use rubbing alcohol, um, any anything that will, uh, the goal in, in my opinion is to um, use something that doesn't leave any residue and also um, removes any oils from your fingers. Next, we want to find our appropriate hardware for the CPU that we're going to be mounting this to and determine the proper direction that we want our hardware facing because it is possible to uh, flip this over and mount it backwards and then um, you're going to have an issue with alignment to the backing plate. Now I am uh, removing the stock um, cooling hardware that the board comes with um, and that way we can mount our uh, our new um, hardware to the um, existing backing plate on the motherboard. Now I'm um, since I've figured out what direction the hardware needs to go in order to line up with the backing plate I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount the hardware to the uh, cooler. Now you'll notice that I'm using a powered screwdriver here um, to, to do some of the work on the CPU or on the, the computer um, components and I will let you know that I'm using an incredibly low setting for the clutch because it's real easy to strip out these small screws. So I have my clutch set down at uh, the lowest setting. That's set at a two, um, which I found works perfectly for these small screws um, so that they're nice and snug, but we're not, I'm not stripping out any screws anywhere. So if you do decide to use a power drill or power screwdriver like I am, be sure to ha that it has a clutch um, for one thing, and that you've got that clutch set down to the lowest setting, um, and then you can check to see, uh, you know, how tight is that holding, and, uh, you know, make sure you're not stripping out any of the hardware, because um, obviously that's not good. So, um, just wanted to point that out if you're using any power tools. Usually, most people that are doing this are using, um, you know, hand handheld screwdrivers and aren't using power powered equipment. So um, that's all there. Now we're gonna install the uh, cooler unit to the uh, CPU, and I'm just test fitting here um, to make sure that all my hardware lines up um before i put my thermal paste on and then make a big mess right so i'm test fitting um making sure that everything lines up and it's going to screw together okay before i go and put my um thermal paste on now i'm going to clean the um mating surface of the cpu cooler with the same solvent that i used to clean the cpu 
and that's just going to make sure that there aren't any of the adhesives left over from the sticker that was put on there um, left on the surface. So I like nine, nice clean mating surfaces um, before I apply our thermal paste and, and mount everything together. So here's our thermal paste. I'm using Arctic MX4. I uh, generally like to use um, a kind of a high quality thermal paste and generally speaking the stuff that comes in the package isn't a high quality thermal paste. Will it work? Sure, but I um, like to use something uh, a little bit higher quality than than stuff that just comes in the box. So um, we ap uh, apply about a pea-sized blob in the middle of the CPU, and then uh, this MX4 stuff comes with a nice little spreader. Um, so now I'm just spreading it out evenly so that we don't have any excess uh, thermal paste on there. So we get a nice... Um, an, a nice smooth mating surface without a bunch of excess um, or missed spots. Now we're going to go ahead and set the cooler on the CPU. We're li lining up the uh, screws with the backing plate. And just go ahead and um, screw them in. I like to get um, each one started. Uh, before I tighten them all the way down. So I just am getting getting them started and getting a few uh, turns on the screws so that um, that we screw it down with relatively even pressure. And you can see I'm going from corner to corner uh, and then corner to corner so that uh, slowly I'm, I'm applying even pressure around all four sides. Um, so after I go around once and get everything started, then we're going to go around again and snug the screws down. And you don't need to tighten these down like He-Man. The springs are what actually hold the tension. So we don't, they don't have to be excessively tight. Just nice and snug is all we're trying to, all we're trying to get. Um, and that's, that's good. Now we're going to mount our fan onto the cooler and I uh, generally want to mount it in such a way that the exhaust of the fan is going into the cooler um, and also uh, that the direction of the airflow is going t toward our exhaust fan and so Generally on, on these fans, um, they will have a mark somewhere on the casing of the fan that's it's got an arrow that shows you the direction of the airflow. Um, usually, the open side of the fan, in other words, the side that doesn't have any bracing for the fan motor, um, the open side will be the inlet side. And the side that has all the bracing and the mounting for the fan will be the side that the air exhausts to. Um, and so we want to mount it with the exhaust side facing the cooler. And then we want the exhaust side facing the back of the case where our exhaust fan is. So that way you've got incoming air from the front blowing into the fan. That's intake. And then the exhaust is going right out the exhaust side into the exhaust fan. And so you have a nice, smooth airflow from front to back. That's kind of the goal that, that I am uh, looking for as far as our uh, having a nice streamlined airflow for cooling purposes. Then the, the way these mount is these springs just hook into the holes. And then we pull the... Uh, pull the spring back over the, the side of the cooler and it just latches on to the side of the cooler. And then from here we just need to plug in our uh, our CPU plug um, and then our RGB plug. And like I said, I made the mistake of ordering this 
um, cooler, and I didn't realize it had a three-pronged, a three pin uh, connector for the RGB. So you can't use it with a four pin header. So be aware if you do use this uh, RGB fan that it's, that it doesn't have a four pin RGB head uh, plug on it. So um, I went ahead and just used a different fan on this build and I'll use this uh, three pin RGB fan somewhere else on another build and it's not a big deal um so uh yeah that's it thanks for watching and i hope that uh this video is helpful and uh be sure to subscribe and all that good stuff